What you guys got another video here for you on what is CPU core parking and should you adjust that setting? Now, you're going to probably see a lot of YouTube videos telling you to unpark your CPU cores to get better frames per second and less latency and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a look and see whether your CPU cores are parked. So if you want to check it, you can go down to the taskbar here, right click, go task manager and then go to performance then go down to open resource monitor this will open up the resource monitor make sure you're on the cpu tab and there are all your cpu cores here and you'll notice there's quite a few cores in modern day processors this is an amd 3800x and you can see here none of these are parked by default so inside here you would see parked against this uh, cpu two it might say parked and then cpu3 parked and what that means is basically it's putting it into some sort of uh, sleep state and when it needs it it will wake up and then start using those cores but of course this is already as you can see here they're all un unparked and i've not done anything so that's basically how you can uh, see whether the cores are parked inside windows in resource monitor now the more cores that are needed they will just kick in automatically and they'll be released and unparked. Uh, core parking is really important because it means it's going to be using less power and less power draw, which means obviously battery life will be lasting a lot longer on laptops and things like that. And also it helps keeping the CPU to run a lot more cooler. Unparking all of the cores will not really necessarily improve performance by that much in most scenarios. So it's just going to depend on what type of CPU you've got and whether you see much more improvement by unparking them all. Now, I'm not completely convinced that unparking your CPU cores will have that much of a difference on your system, but if it has for you, then let me know in the comment section below. Let me know the before and after when you've unparked your CPU cores and what uh, sort of CPU and setup you're using. If you do want to unpark your CPU cores, then you can use something like CPU Unpark. It's a free a program which allow you to unpark your CPU cores. I'll show you how to do it in the registry as well, just in case you're interested. But my personal opinion, I have not seen much difference by unparking uh, your CPU cores. But then again, I do use a lot of modern day uh, hardware. Whereas if you're caught in an era where you're using sort of third gen processors, Intel processors and stuff like that, then a lot of that stuff might have a bit more of an effect on it. I really don't know. Um, but again, if you are using a third gen processor uh, but what you're going to have run into problems with is when you use modern day gpus you're going to run into a problem where you're going to get bottlenecking and also micro stutters freezing and stuff like that and that is due to the technology that you're using it's old and you're trying to play modern day stuff on an old system and you're going to run into issues so that is probably where your main key problems are and you might want to think about upgrading at some point so this is the actual CPU unpark software. When you open it up, you can see here CPU core unparking and it's unparked 100% and that's by default for the Ryzen 3800X. System power plan is here. You can change your power plan. I leave mine unbalanced. Seems to work well with this processor. Keeps the temperatures down. If I go too high or ultimate, it seems to get really hot and starts to get a bit too toasty. So I'll just keep it down at balanced and that's fine for me. No cores are parked, but you can dra drag that slider across to the unparked area unpark all cores and then apply an okay reboot the system and you would then have an unparked cpu if that's what you want to do and that's what you can do with this software it's a simple little software and uh, it can be done in the registry as well now i just want to pick up on the uh, multi-core and, and single core most games will use a single core uh, there is games out there will utilize and handle multi-cores for their games but most games are optimized for a single core so unparking cores is not really going to do you much good in gaming like most people think because most of the games that, that they're playing are probably on a single core anyway unless some of the cores they are going to be using are parked and if that was the case they would generally unpark themselves if they are needed uh, for that game and that's basically how it works. Now if you don't want to use software you can actually use the registry to edit so go down to the search box and type reg edit and open up the registry editor once you're inside here go to edit find and paste in this code here for this value and then go find next this will then find that value and then you can edit it 
and change it to unparked. So I'll let this do a search here and uh, basically it will find that location and then you'll be able to make that change in the registry. Now once it finds the value max and value min, you would just change those to zero because uh, that means they will be then unparked. But your power profile plan plays a part in this as well and you would have to have that on I or on ultimate to make sure you get the maximum out of it. And you can see here this value max and value min, the one of them set to zero, you would set the other one to zero in decimal here and literally put a zero in here, click OK, and then you would go to edit, find next, and find the next value max and value min and put those onto uh, zero as well. There's only a, there should be only a two, two at the most, and then you do that. But I'm going to change mine back anyway because I don't want to change the registry for that, but that's how you would do it inside the registry. And then you just keep going until you find all of the value max and value mins. Very simple. But personally, I would leave them well alone and just leave them as they are uh, because they're not going to make much difference in my personal opinion. I'm just showing you because people will ask how you do it and I just wanted to show you. But basically, that's how you would go ahead and do that. And you would change the profile in your power profile plan to, say, for instance, high or ultimate if you wanted to do that. Let me show you how to do ultimate. You're just going to go down to the search box here and type CMD inside here. Click on command prompt, open up the command prompt box and then paste in this command here. And basically that will give you an ultimate performance set in here, which you can put it on there if that's what you want to do. And this will give you the maximum power uh, for a Windows 10 system here. So let me just close that off. So let's just take a look at our power settings now by typing power settings inside the search box here. And this will open up our power settings here. You can also change this area down here to best performance if you think that really does help. And then go to additional power settings here. And you should now see there is an ultimate performance uh, here, which will give you basically higher power. But this will eat up your battery life as well if you're using a laptop. So bear that in mind. I just leave mine on balance, to be honest, and I don't see much difference between any of these. So... I'll just leave it on balanced and it seems to keep everything running nice and smooth with Ryzen processors. Now, I know not everyone can afford brand new computers and hardware and some people are forced to use older technology, maybe like your first and your third gen and second gen processors, uh, Xeon, old Xeon processors. But you've got to understand a lot of that technology wasn't really geared for uh, hardcore gaming and modern day games of today. And if you're using old Dell Optiplexes because you followed someone on YouTube or something like that, then some of those old systems were built for office use and not hardcore gaming. So when you do do those things with those machines, you're going to end up with the odd 100% uh, CPU usage and also a lot of freeze frames and also micro stutters and stuff like that. So just bear that in mind. My modern day PC, I don't get any of those problems. So get yourself up into the modern day if you can. A lot of those problems will be uh, gone forever. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this one helps you out. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.